Hello and welcome to a new series where we're going to be developing a fantasy name generator. Um, this is a fun project that I've been tinkering around with and I'm very happy with the progress on. Um, the name generator that we're making is going to be useful to folks who play tabletop RPGs or who write sci-fi fantasy stories. Um, and anybody who just needs a, a random name generated and you're tired of, of coming up with names on your own. Um, we're going to be using a little bit of machine learning um, in this program, uh, which is one of the reasons I chose this topic was because I wanted a, a small scale project that I could use to learn some basic machine learning. That will be coming in a future video. Today we're just going to look at a basic generator. I make no promises that the names are easy to read or pronounce or that they sound good. Um, but this is just to get us started. So in order to work with this, I've defined a new class in Python called letter, uh, because we need to be able to work with a letter's lowercase character and its uppercase character. And we also need to keep track of whether letters are vowels or consonants. So each of the, uh, objects in this class is going to have these four attributes, um, two strings, one for uppercase, one for lowercase. And then a true false for is it a vowel and a true false for is it a consonant. Um, and the only reason we need to keep these separate is of course because of the letter Y. It can be both a vowel and a, well, excuse me, it can be a vowel or a consonant. Um, so Y is the only reason that we have to uh, keep track of these. If it weren't for the letter Y, we could just have a single uh, uh, logical variable here for is vowel and we wouldn't have to keep track of both of them. So now that we've got our letter class defined here, we need to add some letters to the alphabet. So here we've got a list called alphabet. Notice we're making it a global variable so that we can access it um, in any functions that we call. And basically we're making a list with every letter of the alphabet. And we've got A through Z here. Um, we've got all of their is vowel, is consonant values. And of course here's our troublemaker Y, the only one with two trues. And so it stores uh, each item in this list as the letters of the alphabet. Now, one thing we'll need to keep in mind as we look uh, farther down the code is remember that Python starts counting at zero. So A is not the first letter of the alphabet. A is the zeroth letter of the alphabet. And B is the first letter of the alphabet. Um, so uh, since we're picking random values, we're going to need to pick random elements from that list. So we're bringing in our random integer generator. Uh, I, I went through the process of creating this in a vPython for beginners video that I'll add in a link in the description below. But basically it picks a random integer between the lower value and the upper value inclusive. I should probably specify that here in my comments that the selection includes the endpoints. So when we want to pick a letter, we just pick a random integer from zero to 25. Uh, and then the process of creating a name is all taking place inside this function, make name. So whenever we want to uh, create a name, we just make a call to make underscore name. Uh, it doesn't take any arguments, um, I, at least not yet. I don't, I don't plan to pass any arguments to it. The first thing we need to choose is the length of the name. So this is something you could play around with depending on how complicated you want your names to be. Um, I've got a minimum length of three and a maximum length of 10. So we're looking at names between three letters and 10 letters. That seems to be a pretty reasonable range. Um, and this is where we're first using a uh, randint because we're selecting a random integer between three and 10. And then our output is going to be this string variable called my underscore name. So we're starting it out as an empty string or a string with no characters. And we're just going to add uh, characters onto my name uh, until we reach the name length. All right. And this is where it gets uh, a little bit more complicated. Um, in order for these things to have a chance of sounding reasonable, we need to keep track of our constant vowel combinations. So what I've done as I've set this up is I'm assuming that a pronounceable name uh, has at most two vowels in a row or at most two consonants in a row. So if you have two consonants in a row, your next 
letter needs to be a vowel. And if you have two vowels in a row, your next consonant needs to be a, excuse me, your next letter needs to be a consonant. So to all of the Christophers out there and all of the Samanthas out there, I'm sorry, this code will never generate your name. Um, but keeping track of all those exceptions gets a bit more complicated than we would have to keep track of the actual, uh, I think the technical term is phonemes, um, instead of the, the, the characters. And we might expand this to do that in a future video, but for right now, we're just going to limit ourselves to two consonants in a row or two vowels in a row, which I, I hope to show you actually works surprisingly well. You can get a surprisingly high number of semi-pronounceable names from this pretty basic way of putting these together. Okay, so the next part is the main event. This is where we select letters for the name. Oh yeah, I should actually talk about what these uh, variables are doing here. Um, we've got four logical variables to keep track of. Uh, whether the previous uh, letter was a consonant or a vowel. That's what previous vowel and previous consonant are for. And then we've got previous two vowel and previous two consonant. And that answers the question, were both the previous two letters vowels and were both the previous two letters consonants? So this is the, these are the real important two ones here because these are what are going to control uh, whether we can select a consonant or a vowel next. Next comes the, uh, the, the, the main part of the code. This is where we generate the letters for the name. So we're going to loop over um, the, the, the letters in the name. So we're going to go for I from zero to the length of the name. And what we are doing is we're, we're getting a new letter and we're storing it in this value A. So let's talk about how the, we get the letter in just a second. Um, but basically what we do is we check for whether we're in the first letter in the name. From the first letter, we make it the upper char uppercase character. And if we're not, then we make it the lowercase character. So that's pretty straightforward. And then we start keeping track of whether we have two vowels or two consonants in a row. So we update previous two vowel and previous two consonant. Basically, this is checking for if um, A is a vowel and the previous one was a vowel. Same thing here with consonants. And here we're just overriding the previous, uh, the previous vowel and previous consonant with the current one. So you notice we have to evaluate the previous two logical variables before we can rewrite the uh, the previous vowel and previous consonant, and then we just return the name. Now the question comes in, we need to have this get letter return the appropriate uh, consonant or vowel if that's what we need, and that's why we're passing previous two vowel and previous two consonant to get letter. So let's go, scroll down here to get letter. And so this basically is saying whether we need a consonant and whether we need a vowel. So we're interpreting the, the, the variable names a little bit differently to keep track of what it is we need. So if your previous two letters were vowels, then you need a consonant. And if your previous two letters were consonant, then you need a vowel. And so we're importing the alphabet here so we don't have to define it again and we don't have to pass it as an argument. So we've got our global alphabet here. Um, and we are going to repeat this until we are done. So this is uh, one way I like to structure while loops when there's a lot of possibilities for when it can end or when it needs to continue is I just define a logical variable called done and set it equal to false. And then the code runs while we're not done. You know, that's kind of a, that's kind of the most basic way you can set up a while loop. Um, so here we pick a random uh, letter. So we're picking a random, actually I just, yeah, we're picking a random letter from our alphabet list. And again, this is the object letter, meaning it's got the uppercase, lowercase, the is vowel and is consonant all stored in it, in the object. And here we're checking for whether we have the appropriate type of letter we need. So if we need a consonant and A is a vowel, then we return false. We are not done yet and the thing is going to repeat. Or if we need a vowel and A is a consonant, then we're not done yet. We return false and the loop is going to repeat. But if those are, if neither of those is true, meaning if we need a consonant and we have a consonant or we need a vowel and we have a vowel or we don't need either, if it can be a consonant or a vowel, then we can just immediately exit. Uh, we can say that we're done and then we return A and then we come back up here and we continue along with the process. Uh, it took me way too long to come up with the structure for this if block. If you see an error in this, please let me know because I've, I've tested it several times and, and it seems to be working fine. Um, and then here we just call make name and we print the name that we made. So let's save this 
and run it to see what kind of name we get. Hopefully we'll get a decent sounding one. Yahoo! Isn't that a cool sounding name? Yahoo! Or Ehu! Since Y is troublesome, it can be a consonant or a vowel. So it's not the, you know, it's not the most pronounceable name in the world, uh, but it sounds kind of cool if you, if you mangle it a little bit. Uh, let's see, we could have Xmukiv. Okay, so this one is definitely uh, uh, problematic, right? This one definitely needs to be rejected. We need to develop some kind of safeguards against getting names like this. Let's try a few more. Kelks. Okay, I'm calling that one. That is my next rogue that I build is going to be named Kelks. And let's see. Ecolur? Sounds like a drink to me, not a person. Um, I didn't say it was a people name generator. And Mixamo. Okay, so we just generated one, two, three, four, five. Um, one of those is definitely not pronounceable, definitely not serviceable. One of them is, is dubious at best. One of them is just plain weird. So out of those five, we got two, Kelks and Ihu, that were acceptable. So that's not a great um, performance rate. Uh, we would have to, you know, run this several times before you got a name that you liked. So what we're going to look at next time is how we can structure this thing so that it produces more pronounceable names, so that it produces names uh, according to better pronunciation rules. And we're going to actually take a look at which letters are coming after which. So we'll get a little more detail than just mashing two consonants together. Clearly, we can't just uh, pick two consonants because we'll end up with X and M together. And that's not going to work out so well. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.